This is the DualSense controller, shipped with a PlayStation 5 if you have one, or you can purchase one on its own for 70 bucks. Introduce new things like, well, the new design, the shape, as well as adaptive triggers, which is a cool thing, and haptic feedback, as well as some other minor fixes here and there. This thing is pretty rad. I like it. It's beefy, it's heavy, and it feels good in the hands. Well, Hex Gaming has one. It's called the Rival. Looks similar, if not almost exactly the same in shape and design, except you can customize every little piece of it. It also has backpacks. But this guy doesn't cost $70. This one specifically costs almost $300. And I think we need to discuss why Hex Gaming puts out a $300 customized controller. Let's get into it. Yo, my name is Julian Mullick and welcome to the Console Gaming Channel. That's right, we're button mashers, thumbstick thrashers, and here to have a good time playing video games. So this all started with an email. I got an email from Hex Gaming saying, hey, we have this new PS5 controller. You seem to be a guy that's into controllers. Can we send it to you? I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. I said, yeah, awesome, cool. They didn't actually ask for anything. They just said, can we send it to you? Now, first and foremost, I'm gonna get this out of the way. I didn't pay a dime for this thing. They gave it to me. They sent me a code. That code allowed me to completely customize this controller any way I wanted to. So I pretty much maxed it out and made it the most expensive thing possible. The only thing I didn't opt for was hair triggers because, um, well, this thing is not a custom controller made for the PlayStation 5. It's a customized PlayStation 5 controller that's been actually modded to have these back paddles, which is extremely important. That verbiage is very important. I think we need to get into some little handheld work and we'll talk some more over at the TV. All right, first things first, grab our controller and let's power on the system. This controller does indeed power on the system, which is nice. I feel like that's a feature that you lose with customized controllers. Let's get into the game. We're gonna play some Ghost of Tsushima because I've been having a good time playing that and I think that it looks the best right now. So we're gonna get into that. Now um, I'm gonna go over just the feel of this and how it is playing and hopefully the focus doesn't leave the TV. So let's go ahead and focus on the TV, get into a little bit of action, uh, standoff. Yeah, yeah, here we go. So first thing I will tell you is the buttons feel the same. Um, let's see here, are we gonna win this? We did, right out the gates, and the vibrations are awesome. Now, the controller does feel natural. I don't feel like I am necessarily uh, using anything foreign. You know, oftentimes with third-party controllers, you have to get used to it. I, I don't have to get used to this. I'm not having to get used to this at all, actually. This feels pretty good. Now let's go ahead and customize the back paddle. So first things first, we're gonna power the back paddle on by just pressing this right here. There's a red light. That red light means that we're ready to program. To program, let's program our slash. So the slash is gonna be this button, which would normally be square, but these don't have any symbols on them. Uh, by pressing that and the paddle we wanna use. We're gonna see some flashing lights, we should. We're gonna do the jump on this one. So you might, you might see some flashing, good. So that means that now the jump and the slash buttons are programmed. We're gonna shut off the programming mode by holding the back button. We should be good to go. So I'm just gonna use the jump and the slash button on the back paddle. So let's focus on the TV again. Let's see here. There's that, right? Okay, so I am gonna have to break through by using triangle. Now I'm gonna jump. That's it. That's it, as easy as that to unprogram everything. You don't have to go in and try to redo anything. All you have to do is press these top two buttons here, these top two buttons here, and then all four of the shoulder buttons. So what you'll notice is I do all of those and you're going to see three or two or three slow red flashing lights. There it goes. And I have now just disengaged the customization. So that's actually pretty cool. And what I wanna talk about now is the controller itself. Who is this for and should you spend the $300 to buy one? Here's the first and foremost thing. This is not for the casual gamer. This is a very, very expensive investment. Um, $300 for a controller is, I, I think the most expensive customized controller. Um, the Xbox Series 2 Elite or Elite Series 2 controller, I think is like 179. I think the custom one, the new Halo Infinite, it's like 200 bucks. But this is three, this one right here as, as customized is like 297. That's pretty crazy. Now, speaking into the quality, the quality on this is unmatched. I have yet to see a controller 
as good of quality. I, I I'll come out and say that this controller right here has better, it is better in quality than the actual PlayStation 5 controller, which feels great. The pieces of plastic are thick, they're hard, they feel good, they feel solid. There's there's no creak to the controller itself. Um, the back texture, I like that. And these back paddles, they're back buttons, which I appreciate. I much prefer back buttons to back paddles. The PlayStation controllers, great. It's, it's a beautiful, wonderful controller. I, I, I prefer it to the Xbox, but the quality is absolutely unmatched. Hands down, best thing ever. If money is not an issue, if you're like, I don't care, I'll spend anything on anything, this is the controller to have. The person who is willing to spend 300 on this, awesome. You're going to get an incredible product. I don't know those people. Um, I'm not one of those people. I would never spend the price of a Nintendo Switch on one controller. That's just outside of my price range. And I am not the target audience when it comes to using a paddle style controller. I don't like back paddles. I bought them to review them and that's it. I have this to review it and to tell you it is an incredible, beautiful piece of tech that is really expensive and outside of my price range. Um, one last thing, which is, is what it is. These are removable. You can change out the thumbsticks, which for some people, that is a huge, huge thing. They can change it to whatever style you want, whether it's more raised ones and you do get four extra customizable thumbsticks. So you can change those out and they feel pretty good. I, this thing right here, it is $300 and I can't afford it. So I hope that helped you guys understand what Hex Gaming is doing. Hex Gaming, you guys are doing something real special, real awesome. And man, if you could chop a hundred bucks off of these things, I think they would sell like hotcakes. But right now, 300 bucks, that's crazy. If you guys are someone who's like, I'm gonna get it, it's cool, it's too cool to pass up. I can customize everything on it, I have to. Awesome, please check them out. They are the best hands down customized controller I've ever used or seen without a shadow of a doubt. If you're someone who's like me, who's like, at $300 for a controller, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I totally understand. Just know that these guys are doing something special, something rad, and I appreciate the free controller, guys. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you want to see the unboxing, please check it out. I unboxed this thing. I did it silent style because I'm a nerd, so you should check that out. But most of all, you know the drill. Happy gaming.